David, it's so nice to finally be sitting here uh, doing this interview with you. It's been it's been a work in progress. It's been a long time coming. Yeah. <laughs> We're finally here though, and we have a lot to talk about. Uh, I want to start off. You are a Canadian in LA. Yes. Uh, you came from Brampton, graduated from Sheridan College. Can you tell my viewers what you studied at Sheridan and how you got to where you are? Sure. Um, yeah, my the the actual class I took in school was animation. Um, it was hand-drawn animation. So it was a three-year program at Sheridan College. And um, it kind of prepared us for kind of anything in the animation and graphic arts industry, which is great because um, it's not just drawing, it's also storytelling and um, the way to develop characters and think in all different angles. A lot of people that graduate from Sheridan go into different industries, um, such as comic books or um, film or TV or graphic arts advertising, all that kind of stuff. So it just my direction after it went straight to animation because that's what I've wanted to do since, since honestly, since as early as I can remember. And since then, it's gone crazy. I mean, you got here, you worked with Sony for a while. Uh, You've since made the switch to I know what what was a dream of yours to be working for Disney. You've worked on everything from Open Season, which is a personal favorite, uh, to Surfs Up. You've really done most of the big movies that have come out recently. Um, Home was another great one, and now you're working on Zootopia, which is it's huge. When you start drawing a character. I know there's a vision that the director has and that you have to follow, but what's it like getting your your pen to the paper and, and doing that? Sure. Um, so first I have to d d dispel a myth that when you're working on a CG film, um, such as Zootopia or like you said, the other ones I've worked on, um, we are actually working on the computer. So in these movies, there's a lot of art and a lot of hand-drawn stuff being done. My job right now as a CG animator, like I said, I'm, I'm trained as a hand-drawn animator as well as a CG animator, but my job as a CG animator is taking um, these pretty much CG puppets in a computer and um, moving them around and performing with them, acting with them to the, uh, the actual actor's voice and audio. The way I plan my shots is I actually draw them in 2D and draw out the whole shot and all the movement and performance. Um, but not everyone does. Some animators don't draw. They're actually just very good at performance. Do you ever and have an idea in your head about a character and then once the actor comes in and starts performing, has it ever completely changed? Um, well, the, the, the good thing um, is, is that the actor will actually record the voice before we get the sh shot assignment. We animate to the voice. We'll because. look at that di dialogue for a day even and just pick apart and find what the perfect performance can be. And obviously, I mean, the actor helps make the character come to life, course, yeah. but it really is the CG animator that's, that's making this little character move and become who that actor is. So how do you do that? that, that that's ac actually... <laughs> actually an excellent question I feel like I feel like it's neither one of us that's doing that I feel like it really is these characters are a team it's you're working with the actors getting their voices and we're bringing our performance to them um, so it really is a team effort because without a good voice no matter how good we can animate it won't be believable if the actual if the re the voice read isn't a believable for performance and so quite often what we do um, is we'll actually go into a room and act the scene out ourselves we'll get the dialogue we know it inside and out what really stuck with me one of the first times I met you was you were telling us how long it takes to make like a 30 second clip and people don't get that so if you can just sort of give us a rundown on how long it takes and why you may have six characters in your shot and you're responsible for all those characters in your shot so therefore you have to know how each one of those characters moves individually, what makes their character unique. For example, uh, one, one sh shot I did when I worked on Kung Fu Panda 2 was this shot of 
um, Poe throwing a wolf up in the air and then a snake wrapping herself around that wolf to use him as a puppet and control him. Then she lands, or then the wolf lands on a tiger and sword bites 16 other wolves. And so that shot was three seconds long, but it took me a month to do. Same. Does it ever come to the point where you get to the end of a movie and you're like, oh my god, I'm so sick of this one line, I can't even watch the movie in full right now? Quite often, I actually miss the characters. Once it's over, I'm like, wait, I wasn't done yet, I want to I wanna keep exploring that character, I want to do more with that character. Um, Zootopia was a perfect example of that. I feel like the characters in that movie are so rich and the voices we get from Jason Bateman and Jennifer Goodwin are so meaty with with uh, what they're saying and how they're saying that I just loved animating them so I didn't want it to be the over. part of Zootopia that that I love is how many times they have plays on words or even plays on names uh, I know there's a Canadian character in it uh, Peter Moosebridge Canadians will love this yeah. I think it's great um, I thought it was fantastic that, that they cast him as that Give us like a plot rundown. Sure. Um, so, so Zootopia is about a, a city, a big um, metropolitan city inhabited completely by um, mammals, and uh, there's there's no humans in Zootopia, um, and it's sort of it's a story about a small town girl that has big town dreams, and it follows her her story about being um, the first. Um, first rabbit cop um, on the force and what she has to go through where you know uh, usually cops are the bigger animals like rhinos and rhinos and wolves and elephants and big animals with um, a lot of strength and so she has to find other ways to be able to to um, make herself an, uh, a successful member of the force. It's gotten so much hype. There's so many people that can't wait to see it. It comes out on March 4th, mm -hmm. which is this Friday. Yes. If you could go back in time and work on any animated movie ever made, which one would it be? It's a very good question. I would have to say, um, if I had the chance to work on any other animated movie, it would probably be either Lion King or Aladdin. Good choices. Yeah. yeah, Lion King's my all-time favorite. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Uh, I have one more question that I try to ask each of my guests. It's about your socks. Yes. Uh, I think that socks tell a lot about a person. Okay. And I'm wondering if you'll show me yours. I can show you my socks. <laughs> Not my shoes, because these are old. So these specific socks have a story today. Is um, A bunch of friends and I are doing a challenge to be healthier and lose some weight and all that kind of stuff. And today was one of my weigh-in days. Okay. So I was wearing the lightest pair of socks possible. So they're the shortest socks. I held other pairs of socks and tried to weigh them to make sure I stayed in my zone. Otherwise, I fall out of the challenge. Did you achieve it or do you I know did. yet? I'm actually, I did achieve and I'm actually do I'm doing very well. Congratulations, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. That's one of the best stock, sock stories ever. Good. <laughs> Thank you so much, You're David. Welcome. I appreciate it.